Hello, this is Warlord. What we're going to do today is take this battle axe, which is actually a tool, a free tool in ZBrush, and we're going to take it out into Substance Painter, paint it, and we're also going to distress it, and then we're going to get it ready for use in iClone. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, like I said, this is a free tool. You can go to uh, badking.com and pick this up. It was made by Nick G. Zealous. I hope I didn't say that wrong. It's one of the insert mesh brushes. You actually get three different versions of this. And it is super neat. Now, as you see it here, it's just one color. There's two of them over here, but that's just because I have a copy of it. It's actually just one mesh the way it's set up. So, let's go over here. And let's go into Substance Painter. Let me show you some things that can happen if you've never used this before. We're going to go into New. I'm just going to discard. Now, I'm going to select my model. This comes straight out of ZBrush. What I'm selecting has nothing done except that if I were to export it right out of ZBrush. And you're going to see what happens. It has no UV coordinates, so it can't load in. Let's do this again. And I'm going to show you another common problem you're going to run into. And that's a one color object. As you can see here, you can paint on this, but not like what you want. Because it's mapped for messed up. It wasn't unwrapped right or, or it wasn't UV'd right. So this could be problematic. That's why I take these into Studio Max. Let's start one more time here. And let me grab the one that's set up properly. We're not pulling in any other maps or anything. I'm staying in DirectX mode. Now here you can see I have it set down. I have it broke down into axe handle, bottom, handle. Excuse me, axe head, bottom, handle, handle cover. Things like that. You can solo it, go in and paint it a whole lot easier. Now, the way we did that, or the way I did it, was I took this model into Studio Max. You can do this in any uh, kind of software that you can go in and get to the meshes. And you, like just about anything, it's actually the texture that's naming it. So let me bring up texture. I'll go into compact, simple mode here. And you'll see the blue here for the axe head. I have it labeled as axe head. The shaft is the yellow. Bottom is the lighter yellow, green for the rings, and so forth. So that's how it's broke down. Now, you don't have to do any of this. I'm just showing you how to break one down in case you run into one that's not. In a lot of cases, you're just going to be able to bring the model in, and it probably is going to work. So let's go ahead and get out of here, and let's go into Substance Painter, and let's get started. Now, we're just going to keep this part simple. There's a lot of things you can do with this software but you got to start somewhere and just like any other piece of software you don't have to use all the bells and whistles you just use whatever you need or whatever you're comfortable with or whatever you can figure out so let's go over here and i'm going to go to metal six that's my favorite metal for items like this like this battle axe what i did was increase my brush size over here don't worry about all this other stuff we're just i'm just going to show you some basics don't let the interface intimidate you if you've never seen it before all i'm doing is just painting over this and look how it's looking you can paint on either side you notice it's just this way when this maps like this i can paint like this and i won't have to actually hold down alternate and move the the model around okay now the bottom so you can paint on either side for me if i'm just going with solid colors like this base right now it's probably easier on the maps Handle, let's see, let's just go with short cowhide. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting this right. You can see where brush strokes are important, but we're just going to move on. Handle cover, I want something that's bright so it'll stick out. So let's use crab shell. And just get her filled in. Doesn't matter if it's outside the areas as long as it takes color. Rings, let's go down and get brass or copper. Let's get brass. It'll show up better. Okay. Shaft, we'll go back to metal six. And then the tip. Okay. 
Yeah, let's see what we've got. Now that sure didn't take much to do that, and that looks actually looks pretty nice. The reason it's doing that is when I when I click it, it that's the one I have on tip is what I have highlighted over here. That does not look bad. So what we need to do next is distress it. Let's go ahead and solo again. Go over here to brushes and let's pick up cracks. And I want to use, let's use Silk Generic, just because it's there. Bring this down where we can see. Again, you can paint on either one. But what I want to do right here is just put in just a few wear cracks. And I've got the red in there, so it'll kind of look like it's got blood in it, maybe. Something like that. Okay, now, this is all, of course, whatever you want to do. I'm just showing you basic technique. Let's go to Dirt 1. We'll leave that on. Let's see what happens when we kind of paint where these nicks are. Yeah, look at that. Don't want to get too bad overkill, but you're going to usually find blood and damage on the leading edges, I think. Not that I have a lot of experience with edged weapons in the field. But I'm going to guess that they're going to see some damage. And that may be quite a bit of damage. Again, I'm not going to worry artistically about what this is going to look like. I'm just showing you how to do it. You can come in and spend more time on making it look better. The reason I picked these areas is, again, this is the leading and back edge of the blade. And the poking edge of the blade. And probably occasionally you're going to smash somebody with it. Now, that looks good, but in order to take off a little bit of the edge, let's go all the way down here to Uniform Black, same brush, and let's just dole it out over that red so it doesn't look quite so bright. You can also do this from over here, whichever one you want to use. And then just randomly, that's dirt, so just randomly hit it with dirt. Now these are just a few of the brushes. There's a whole lot more brushes here that could be used. Go back and add a few more cracks. And... It didn't, the cracks didn't show up as much also because I didn't have the, the red in there. So let's go back and grab Silk Generic. That'll probably work for that. And then all we do after that really is just work our way down into the same thing. So, let's see, this is the bottom. We won't spend a lot of time here but let's see what we can get going going back to my uniform black a little too dirty there we go Handle. Things to the switching back and forth, I'll do. Oops, not car paint. We want silk. I'll do the red, and then we'll come back if we don't forget it. When you get my age, it's not a guarantee you're going to remember. But you always have a creative director that will. Why we use this? That looks a little too contrived right there. Okay. Now let's go back to our uniform black and just add a little here and there. Take the edge off that red. 
Let's dirty it up a little. This is just kind of random. Of course, you want to put it where they would hold it or something like that, maybe. Okay. There's a lot of things we could do. We could just keep going. But for no more time than we have spent, this looks pretty good. You can also come up here and go to 2D or 3D only. You don't have to have all those maps showing all the time. But if you look there, that does not look too bad. As far as being roughed up and things like that. So this is basically how you use it. What we'll come out and do next is export this out and get it ready to go in Dichrome. Okay, now if the hard work's over, let's get the easy stuff done. Just go into Export Texture. If I did that too quickly, go back to File, Export Textures, and then export whichever textures you want. This is where you tell it where you want it to be exported to. In this case, I'm going to export it to a folder called Maps. And I want all of these. If I didn't, I would, of course, just uncheck or check the ones that I want. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Then we'll export. And it may take a while depending on the complexity and the depth of your maps. And how many maps you're doing. You may just be doing one or you may be doing several. But once this is finished. <clears throat> here as you can see it's finished. We'll open the folder. Folder opened up on my other monitor here. These are the different textures we just made. One for each set. Each one of these items over here. And now we're ready to get it ready to use an iClone. Okay, I exported this axe out of Studio Max into 3D Exchange. And from here, all I did was just go ahead through iClone 6, exporting to iClone 6, and export it over into iClone 6. So let's go have a look. Here it is in iClone 6. And the way we would change these, of course, would just be right over here where we change all our textures. If you've never done this before, it's not that difficult. Now, this was created in a PBR environment, and iClone 6 is not PBR. But pretty soon, with iClone 7 and Character Creator 2, uh, PBR is going to be available. So, you won't be using all the maps right now. But if you use PBR in the future, you will be using all the maps. But let's see what we can do to make it look better in iClone. So, here we are on the bottom. <clears throat> okay. We know that all we've got to do is go find our our proper uh, maps. Now, it's not going to look too good right now. We'll add some stuff to it. And all we're going to add right now is the diffuse and the bump map. And be sure that you do add it as a normal when you add that bump map. Okay, now's the handle. And that's all we're going to add on the handle. The shaft. And we'll go get the bump for the shaft. Rings. Tip. Handle cover. Go up here to axe head and the bump map or normal map for the axe head. Now, in order to make this look better in iClone's lighting environment, Let's go ahead and add a reflection map, and I use reflection 03. You can play with it and do what you want. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm not going to add this to all of them, but probably will to most of them. That's the bottom. The shaft. Anything that you want to be shiny. The rings are next. Might go ahead and use the orange glow on the rings. And then this tip, you can see how dull it is. We'll come up here and add a three. And now we're getting more of a metal look, more of a metal reflective look. Let's go into visual. And let's see. Around some ambient occlusion, HDR, tone map, shut off effect cross for now. Actually, I kind of like that better without. But that right there gives you an idea of what it looks like in iClone 6. And, of course, you could dull that out with some uh, different reflections. Not make it quite as bright or come in and, and change your reflective strength. Now, you can also add these maps back here in 3D Exchange. But I just find it much easier to go ahead and work in iClone. Anyway, I hope this helps you get through just a little bit of what you can do with uh, Substance Painter. There's really not much to it. Just... Use what you can figure out, and every time you come back, try and learn something new. I appreciate you stopping by, and I hope this helps.